So I've been practicing this extremely fun and challenging scenario where we start as a tribe and we get an enemy raid and an orbital trader every day and a supply drop every two days. That's actually going to make the game a lot harder because since we are starting as a tribe, we don't have any tech to be able to use the stuff inside of it. Also to add a ton more difficulty, we're playing with the no pause challenge, which is very difficult. It's a lot harder than you would think it is. And we're playing with the void storyteller on 500% threat scale and adaptation growth rate is zero. So we don't get rewarded for having people die or punished for keeping people alive. I've got a really cool Romanesque ideology on our structure that usually doesn't do anything is going to give us a ritual. Rome's economy was heavily based around slavery and the meme we're going to start with is supremacist. I actually did not come up with a name for ideology on. It was originally the randomly generated book title for our narrative and I thought that name encapsulated this ideology on perfectly because we can do rituals that will boost our development points and we can unlock more memes later if we do them. I'll let you guys read the first ritual and the second one is a gladiator duel that we could do between prisoners. Plus we also get access to a shooting specialist which will increase their shooting ability but they can't really do anything else. And we can get a melee specialist which again cannot really do anything else. And in my practice runs I never assigned a melee or a shooting specialist just because we needed people to be doing other things. So I recorded that intro and attempted this scenario I want to say like 10 times and could not get past around day 9. Evidently the void storyteller got buffed around 4 months ago and that would make sense because I haven't completed a run and well ever playing with this mod pack and removal the magic on hard mode. That being said I disabled daily raids so the only hostile events we're going to get are from void which I think he sent us like 10 hostile events by day 9 in my last run most of them being raids and in my last run one spellcaster killed two of our colonists instantly because we're playing with removal the magic on hard mode and so let's just say this run is not going to be easy we're going to hope that we get some good starting colonists here and I paid someone to remove the randomize button with the mod so you guys know I'm not re-randomizing each of these individual colonists and this is a list of 10 random colonists and I'm not going to go through these guys and choose three and I'll kind of explain why I chose what we chose. So this first dude is kind of a jack of all trades. He can build, mine, cook, and do medical, all of which are going to be very useful early on. And coordinated increases global work speed and increases stats in general. Plus field medic increases medical 10 speed. It just lowers his quality so I'm not sure how good that is. That's an interesting combo with squeamish because he doesn't like to see blood but we'll see how that plays out. Next we got Marius the Technomancer and part of this class is not compatible with Rimble the Magic but I think there's still two talent trees that we can go down with it so we should be okay. Technomancer gets bonuses to research speed and shooting and the guy has passions for both so he's really compatible with it. It does increase his global work speed but it lowers his planting harvest yield which kind of sucks. It's just by 20% though so that's not a big deal and he'll be able to plant at the very start. Plus Fortune Finder actually does increase his plant harvest yield so it kind of counters out there. It's kind of interesting because the only thing Arcade could really not do is planting and research and Marius can do both of those. And with that we're pretty much covered on all of our bases and there's kind of a few choices here that we have to choose from. Sara Viana is a rune knight which is a good melee class from what I remember. They have access to offensive, defensive, and healing magic. And I'm hoping they have magic resist because I believe magic resist can help counter out those spell casts that like kill your colonists. There's like a chance they can resist those spells which could come in clutch and so you kind of want your tank to be a defensive caster. Rune Knight also increases pain shock threshold by 20% which is nice because low pain tolerance reduces it by 15. So she's still going to be able to take more damage than a normal person before going to pain shock. However, she will take 15% more damage which is not something you want your tank to be having but hopefully that won't matter too much. She is also vengeful which can be a pretty bad trait. If there's someone that she doesn't like in our colony she'll get like a negative 20 moodlet. It's pretty rough but I still think she's going to be our best option versus like Rajil who is another technomancer but doesn't have any passion for shooting and is a dunce so she gets way lower global learning rate. Plus she vocally harasses whoever she sees mine so they lose recreation very quickly and they need to do more recreation which is not good. This next colonist Gruli is not really good at anything that we need. Yegor also is very average and he's misogynist. He dislikes women. Danenberg is eccentric which increases research speed but we don't need a researcher. We already have Marius. Juancho also sucks. Like a lot of these guys just suck hardcore. This is like one of my worst runs I would say in terms of our starting colonists. This dude Yuhang would be a really good shooter with eagle eye to increase his shooting accuracy. Morksman also increasing it but he has no passion for shooting. Is also misogynist. He hates women. And then Apothecary is an herbal class that revolves around planting but the dude cannot plant. It's no go for him and Crossin just is mega suck. Like a lot of these guys just suck. We just didn't have a whole lot of options here. It's really only between Rajal and Sarivana that I was kind of considering swapping these guys out but I think we should go for the Rune Knight tank who does have access to healing magic which can come really in clutch and yeah without further ado we are doing the no pause challenge and we're gonna base in this area I think. This is a really nice area. So first things first we set an area make everyone go to that area and then we're gonna start chopping down some trees. 
We also got a nice little runes over here that would make for a good starting base as it is floored in a bit. And let's just try to find some steel. We got some over here. We could have some people start mining that as well. Wolf sorry, Vana with her three mining come over here and start mining that. Plus Arcade can do it as well. He's got a compulsion to mine. That's not a good start. Arcade already got insulted. Wow. I do think that's because of sorry, Vana being abrasive. And if possible, we want to keep her away from everyone else. So maybe we'll just have her solo mine. She is a natural genius at it, so she'll be learning it quicker. And then we'll have Arcade haul some of the steel that we've already mined out over here and we'll start building some walls out of steel because it's not flammable with one of my mods it makes steel not flammable and then we'll make some outer walls out of steel as well and this will just ensure that raiders do not come by and set the walls on fire which is very annoying to deal with in the heat of a raid so we're on day 1.2 we've not gotten any raids yet by void and then we're not getting a raid every day we do still get an orbital trader every day mainly because we're hostile with everyone that was part of the scenario so we can't do any trading unless we get orbital traders and the idea is that they're going to basically help us defeat Void and all these other evil factions. That's kind of like the premise, I guess. This trader is a bulkage trader, and this could actually be really good for us because we have this copper ore that's completely useless to us until we research a certain tech required to be able to smelt it. This stuff sells for five bucks a pop though, and we got like 63 over here. We get tons of it from mining. And so we're gonna have these guys just mine as long as we can until this bulkage trader leaves, which is gonna be another nine hours. So there's gonna be mining through the rain and they don't like it. They are soaking wets and they do have some other negative moodlets like slept on the ground awful barracks, unsightly environment because this place is just not looking that good, I guess. Let's have Marius come over here and help mine this out as well, even though he's not that good at mining. When people are hungry, so we'll take a little break and have Arcade make up some meals. Oh hell, this is very dirty in here. It's below negative one, which is not good. If the cleanliness is below negative one, apparently it can increase the chance of food poisoning. But after eating, no one's in minor break anymore. And we're going to continue to have Arcade mine out as much copper ore as we can before this bulkage trader leaves. Okay, it's leaving in one hour. We're now going to trade as much copper as we can for 2800 silver and mainly we want to buy some cloth so we can make beds so we're gonna buy 120 cloth but then they might also have some equipment down here. This bird skin dancer bodysuit gives plus 60% social impact, but minus 100% trade price. That's kind of interesting. We could give that to our warden and that would make them much more likely to be able to recruit prisoners. This top hat also increases social impact. We should get that for our warden as well. This exo frame increases global work speed by 50 and carrying capacity by 300. It doesn't give any armor though, and it costs a lot. So it is kind of balanced in that regard. Okay, we should buy that for sure. We could definitely use 50% more global work speed. Plus we'll also buy some medicine and with the leftover silver we could buy an animal. These pedigreed raptors will increase the beauty of a room by 15% and this one's really cheap because it's genetics suck. For 435 we can buy that if we just buy a little bit less medicine. Like we can buy 7 medicine and yeah that's a really good deal that we just got. That increased global work speed will be very good on Arcade who is still stressed out by the way. Relaxing socially. Got insulted as well. That's kind of brutal. Okay, phew. I thought that was a mental breakdown. He was really on the verge for a while there. If we give him the exo frame, is that going to cover his groin? No. So uncovered groin. We're getting raided by slavers. That was pretty fast. So that was day 1.85. They're going to prepare for a while though, I guess. Said prepare. Or never mind, actually, they're coming in right now. They're coming in right away. It said prepare or attack them preemptively or something like that. But yeah, this dude is coming in right away. They are ninja like blood mage. Would actually be really good to knock this person out. Blood mages are really solid. I think this person will continue beating on this wall till they destroy it because when they started attacking us, we didn't have our doors open. So we're just going to let them destroy it and build a wall right here. And yeah, as for who we're going to have our warden be, I don't know if we want to have our abrasive Saravana be it because she tends to insult people and we want to have her kind of far away from everyone, I think. I will say Technomancer does lower social impact though, so we don't really want our Technomancer to be it. There they go. They destroyed the wall and now they're going to come for our traps because we opened up a way into the base. Oh, this is actually really good. She's bleeding now. Got 13 hours left. If we want to send someone out to kite her around. Oh, we got another trader today. Bionic trader. Can't really do anything with that. We could send someone to kite her around until she gets blood loss, which is going to happen in about six hours, I would say. Her movement speed is 72%, but she has some traits that increase her movement speed. 0.4 and then 0.4. So she's still moving at... 3.89, okay. We could actually kite her around. We could have Sorry Vana do it. Mood's okay. We don't want her to be in the base anyways, because while she's in the base, it's just pissing people off. So the way we have her go for Saravana is we're gonna have to close this door. And we're gonna have to build a wooden wall right here. And then she's gonna beat down the steel wall, I guess. But let's just no, don't go. <sighs> no. You freaking moron. Why would you go that way? 
Why would you go that way to build a wall? Like, she, he wanted... Where was he even going? I told him to build a wall. That's really frustrating. Uh, sorry, I want to just run. I actually have no idea what just happened. Like, if you think about it, I was having him build a wall right here, and he tries to open the door and build a wall outside or something. I guess the irritating part is like, I don't know why that happened. And yeah, now he's in serious pain for negative 10. So he could go to mental breakdown. Regardless, all good son is going to get kited by Servana. Hopefully if she doesn't have mental breakdown for the next, I want to say around like three hours because her blood loss is already minor 28%. And arcade came outside. Okay. We need to set areas so that people can't go outside. That's a way to avoid that. Like people should not be allowed to go outside right now. I just was slacking on the areas because I can't pause and do things. It's just go, go, go with no pause challenge, so. Okay, so all good son finally did go down actually. She's at extreme blood loss, 60%, which is enough for her to go down an arcade who now is actually in a pretty good mood. We had him sleep in a bed for a little while and I guess he slept in heat. Could probably fix that by making a cooler in here. Just build a passive cooler anywhere, really. We also got awful barracks. There's a lot of just random crap in here. You can clean that up. And then, yeah, arcade, stabilize up. All good son after you arrest her. And we now have a blood mage that could join us pretty soon. She does have 2.2 will but 13 resist. The question is do we want to enslave her and not have her really do any fighting though is a thing. Because you don't really want to give your slaves weapons. It makes them really likely to turn on you basically. Or do we want to spend the time to recruit her the old fashioned way. In okay, so we captured Algodson and we put her in her own prisoner cell. And we actually gave her one of our bed rolls just because if she's in a really good mood we can recruit her faster. And like she'll be getting more comfort. She won't be sleeping on the ground. We can also build her a table so she can eat with the table. And we're getting our supply drop. So this is gonna increase our map's wealth by quite a bit. Our map's wealth was 12.3K before the supply drop. Now it's 16K. So there's 4,000 worth of stuff in the supply drop. And the reason why we're doing the supply drop is because I want to eventually explore an ancient vault. And the only way you can do that, as far as I know, is through supply drops. Inside them will be an item that you can hack to reveal the location of one. Also, we got an exotic goods trader and they will probably buy whatever is in the supply drop. So we gotta go find that and then have our Technomancer hack it, which is right down here and hopefully he'll be able to do that before the exotic goods trader leaves meanwhile in our prison cell we got arcade trying to recruit all good son and we're only getting point three resist down the first time he talks to her but once he builds up relation with her it'll start getting easier and easier she is also in a pretty bad mood too serious pain unsightly environment and awful prison cell and eight without table and we just built her a table once she gets healed up the serious pain will go away and we could just smooth out some of this wall over here and make her a nicer prisoner cell i'm not sure if that's the best use of our time but we do kind of want her to to join ASAP. We might even be better off just making her like a plant pot in here just to increase the beauty. And then at least flooring in like this soil over here is negative three beauty. And like just adding some wood flooring on some of this crap instead of smoothing it would be a lot quicker. Oh and yeah, I haven't talked about our rune knight. So I have her auto casting create rune and her runes over here are blinking. I think she has six and I'm not sure what this bug is from, but it should show her amount of runes and her mana, but we can see how many runes she has here. So that doesn't really matter too much. And basically every once in a while she'll create runes, which is going to boost her sight manipulation research speed and learning rate but it does give her arcane weakness although we can lower the cost of create rune and i think we should be specking into this first she is level three now and i put two points into blessing of light because it requires two points per one point of it and we can now heal which costs three runes to do and does that give her xp i don't think that actually gave her xp and try that again Oh, I did give her XP to do that. Okay, cool. Those two heals did cost all of her runes though. So I don't know if that was like the smartest play. We probably should have healed up Marius. All the dude is pretty much healed up. He only has two damage on his torso and then one, not even one damage on his arm actually. Yeah, Algutson is no longer in serious pain. She's only in minor pain now, which is nice. And then Arcade should come over here and build this plant pot. And one of you guys just plant a Daylily in here. We'll have Arcade do it. Might as well. That gives 26 beauty. Wow. Oh, we still got this. It needs to be floored in over here. Oops. All these walls that are giving negative two is really hurting the room mainly i think we can actually chat with her again it's been quite a while meanwhile marius did end up hacking the supply crate and there's quite a few things in here a geothermal plants ancient cooking station and a nanite injector pump we could definitely use the geothermal plants and we could sell off like the components i guess that's all this exotic goods trader will buy we could sell them more stuff but we'd have to deconstruct it like this super nanite injector pump and i don't know if we'll have time to do that we were just able to bank that little bit of silver and arcade with his industrial exo frame has a mass carried of 975 i have a mod that alters carrying capacity based on size and some other factors and yeah this 300 increased carrying capacity actually translates into a lot more with that mod so he's able to carry everything i thought that was kind of cool like the geothermal plant 
is 150 kg. That thing is massive. Plus all that wood and steel and stuff. And yeah, we're going to be able to use maybe the cooking station, although it does require power. And we could get power from the geothermal plant, but there's only two steam geysers that I'm seeing on the map. And they're kind of in the middle of nowhere, basically. We could try to just set up the geothermal plant like out here and then kind of wall it in. But I think raiders might attack it. And we can't actually build power lines right now anyways. So I think we're best off just plopping it down and deconstructing it. And that's actually perfect. The trader we got today is a hoarder trader. So we'll actually just plop this stuff right out here. Start deconstructing it. I don't think we can use this cooking station really. And the work speed factor is only 80%, which I don't understand. It can never suffer breakdowns and it can operate during solar flares, but you would think the ancient station would work at at least 100, if not more. Because it's ancient technology, which is like better than, you know, standard stuff. But yeah, after deconstructing that stuff, we got 10 more components, one advanced component. I'm guessing that was from the geothermal plant. And a lot of steel. We don't really need to plow steel, but we can save the steel. This unrefined magicite actually has a pretty high value, I think. Yeah, five bucks, but you can only sell it for 0.94. We can't do anything with it right now, so we're just going to sell it. And yeah, we'll just bank that 429 silver because they don't have anything to sell us. So we got another hoarder trader and we mined out a bunch more copper, 389 of it, which is going to give us 1200 more silver. Plus I want to sell this pedigree raptor. I think this thing sucks. And yeah, we're tunneling into the base over here, which, well, there's way more copper that's not in a home area. So traders will buy anything that's in a home area and then you have sort of want to go back and do some more trading with them. What I'm actually going to do now is just make a home area over the entire map so that when we do get these hoarder traders, they'll buy anything that's on our map. Usually this is kind of annoying to do because they'll clean anything that's in a home area, but with a mod, we can make it so they clean only a specific area. With this button, I assigned area one to be our cleaning area. And so home area really is only for fighting fires now. Like if there's any fires on the map that are inside a home area, I think they'll try to clear them out. But yeah, we have 464 more copper for 1,455 more silver. So if we do get a trader that has some good stuff, then we can trade with them and sell these components as well. And we did get an anima seed and I've never actually done anything with these before, but we got a random event giving us an anima pod sprout so we'll plant that and see what happens with it so there's still two man hunting boars outside and we're getting raided there was three and i feel like these are going to calm down in a second here but hopefully the raiders will fight them we got a group of shek which i was highly considering removing this mod um just because they're not balanced at all like the mod author actually even said they were balanced on the mod page because they're dumber at research and they're dumber in some other way but their combat abilities are insane like they have 50 percent more hp on their body parts and they have like 30% built in armor. So yeah, these things are not balanced. Also, their value should be like 2,500, but the mod author actually went in and lowered their value, which I highly disagree with. Just because they're slightly dumber at research doesn't mean that they should have lower value. Like that doesn't really make sense to me. But yeah, so they're coming in and they're going to be fighting these wild boar, which are going to be no match for them because for some reason, the Shek have guns as well. I do not remember Shek and Kenshi having guns. But yeah, two of them have guns. Like maybe if they were tribal, it would make more sense, but I don't know. A check with pretty high tier weaponry. Let's actually open this door. I'm gonna open this one as well. We gotta open this one down here too. Yikes. Arcade might get hit while he's out here. We have to kind of... Oof. This is scary. Let's uninstall this trap actually while we're out here. Oh crap, he has to walk. See, that's a situation where actually he could trigger the trap. If we force him to walk over a trap like that, yeah. It's, it's just insane. Like, let's just hit every trap. One, two, three, four, five traps for a Shek. We're gonna have to fight these guys, I think. This dude's probably gonna hit two traps, I would guess, because he's gonna... Okay, three. Nice. Runite, hopefully, can... Um... Nice, we made them run. Oh, and three hits, actually, almost takes down our Runite, who's naked, to be fair, but yeah, she can actually heal herself. Oh, and she's fully healed, okay. On the bright side, they did actually bring us a hammer. We can give that to Arcade and increase their construction speed even more. The hammer's 33%, plus they have that 50% extra global work speed from this exo frame. And yeah, we should be able to rebuild those traps in no time, so it wasn't a big deal, but do keep in mind, that was only three shek. When you start getting raided by like seven or eight, it starts getting a bit more nasty. We will take that MPL, though, for our Technomancer, and I have been leveling up his Techno Bits. Once we get to level five, we get extra range and then it shoots quicker and basically this thing will just shoot at whatever he's shooting at there's three tech trees you can go down the techno bits and then there's weapon specialization which is not compatible with the AOS combat we're getting attacked again see this is what i mean with the uh void storyteller like you get rated by nothing and then you get rated by a crap load of stuff on the bright side i have been building traps and i was going to use these for a specific reason but yeah we can just use these for now 
just because our wooden ones are all used up by the Shek. And we should have time to drop quite a few out here. I don't know what this wooden trap was doing. Yeah, they're taking a while to get here. Like, they're still in the southwest corner of the map, so let's put down a few more traps. I got five over here in our stockpile. Basically, while those boars were outside, I was scared to come out here, so we just built some inside here and then uninstalled them. It's kind of a trick you can do, I guess. Yeah, should five traps be enough for the jellyfish? Like, they have less HP on their body parts, so it should be like one trap per jellyfish, unless one of them has like a god trait or something. And here they come. Like one trap almost guaranteed for these guys. That person did not have a god trait. Oh, this person's nimble, so we're gonna have to fight them. Yikes. You get Marius over here. The MPL. And they're running. Nearly attacked that thing though. Nearly attack it. Dude, Serivana is taking so much damage. Like good lord. She is freaking getting annihilated. Like, what the heck? It's a stupid jellyfish that literally sucks in combat well it has 11 melee but still create a rune and then she can heal herself but her left middle finger got cut off and that's gonna lower her manipulation which sucks we really need to get her some armor and get rid of these bodies as well people are not liking to see that and yeah this is what has been happening with my runs like i just get snowballed on by some kind of bs like the shek race is just bs in my opinion then we got a bunch of corpses in here and everyone's hating those corpses so marius is going to take one for the team and he's going to burn all those and yeah negative seven for observed corpse you get an exotic goods trader and and we do have 3,600 silver, so we could do some trading with them. I'd like to send out Savannah and have her do some trading while Marius is doing this. And burn that stupid check. Burn it good. And alrighty, as far as what this exotic goods trader has, I'm seeing an oddity strong box here, which will contain either a freshly assembled oddity or an ancient item lost to time. Somebody can open the strong box to find a random oddity class weapon, usually of normal or good quality. I think we buy that, honestly. These oddity weapons, some of them can be really cool. And this trader doesn't really have anything else that we need. Well, this black pearl is actually pretty good. It's a good eyeball, but that's like late game stuff. We need weapons and gear right now. So yeah, let's grab that. The only other option I'm seeing is like this iron husk beetle, which these things have a lot of armor, 75%, but they're not that tanky. The eyes only have 17 HP, whereas like a normal humans have 10. And animals in general, like unless they're super tanky, they're not worth it because they're really hard to micro. Oh, we also got a rune knight spell. Is this like their ultimate? You can call down utter destruction on an area. It costs 15 runes though. That's a lot of freaking runes like we're getting one every few hours it seems like so yeah that's an interesting option to get our rune knight ultimate but i would rather get a weapon right now let's see where's saravana he got teleported to where she is and there we go let's open it up and we got a fine probiscus she's industrial ammo it's an assault rifle with biological components shots fired from this rifle store blood from the target then it will mend the shooter's wounds that is sick. It's also better than average at melee combat. I really like this oddities module weapons mod. I think the mod author did a really cool job with making some really unique stuff with it. And yeah, we got an achievement for getting this weapon, which is cool. We now have 30 achievement points, and as you can see, I've not activated dev mode. We don't have the cheater cheater achievement. And yeah, that's a super sick weapon. It doesn't seem to do a crazy amount of damage, but the fact that it can suck someone's blood is so cool. We'll give that to our Technomancer. That would be a sick weapon for him, because he actually has ability resist. And I was noticing, if you guys saw the clip I uploaded where two colonists died, the ones that died to the spell had no ability resist, but the one that resisted the spell was a caster. So yeah, our Technomancer has ability resist, and hopefully should be able to resist some of the more nasty abilities and now has a really sick weapon that actually we have ammo for thanks to that shek raid the stupid shek did have a purpose which was to bring us some ammo for the mpl that's the weapon they were using but we'll just change it out for this fine probiscus what a sick weapon reload that baby marius you got a sick weapon on your hands we just need to find out some gear now saran day nine and every three days now we get a supply crate i don't know if i specified that originally it was every two days and okay we're getting a raid by asari that are nearby which is very bad potentially they could have really long range biotics we did get a ancient broadcast station though which is awesome that's what we're pretty much using the supply drops for is to try to find a location of an ancient vault marius is in a terrible mood hopefully he can make it back without having a mental breakdown yeah that's one thing that's scary about opening up those crates is they can spawn raids and we got a pretty unlucky raid location and marius on a food bench we need to figure out a way to wall him inside don't He's sorry he's not attacking yet, but I will imprison you, Marius, if you're outside when she starts attacking, I swear. Go eat another meal. We should maybe move this table over to out here. Maybe when he wants to eat another meal, he'll go to the table. Oh, crap. Wait, Marius, yeah, go. Grab the meal, go to the table. Yes, perfect. And then start building the wall. Wall him in, yes, good. Wait, we don't want to wall. Well, whatever. We have to chop that down. No. 
something in the way. Um, this is actually really stressful. Um, we have to bring it here, and then we have to come out so she doesn't, uh... Oh, hell. That's not good. That's not what I wanted to do. I want him to go on this side, because now the Asari is going to try to break through one of the walls. Okay, wait. He's eating another meal. Dude, the freaking luck on the fact that there's a stupid plant in the way is insane. Build another wall. Oh, it's coming close. Right, crap, the Asari's coming in. Uh, can we just build that wall and call- okay, we can. Okay, I think we're okay. Yeah, I really didn't want to imprison him because he would have got a negative moodlet for that, and the dude overall is in a bad mood. If we just let him kind of eat it out, then uh, it's much better. She got a scar in her eye. We knocked her though. She has six hours left. She's got a full set of gear too. It's in really good quality. That is actually amazing. We'll have Arcade come out here and arrest her and then perform first aid on her. And yeah, we have an Asari prisoner that does have a mangled scar in her eye. Quite a bad one. But she actually might make for a pretty good slave because she only has one will but 24 resist. So it's going to take a long time to recruit her. And the reason why she makes for a good slave I think is because she can't really fight. Like she can only do slave stuff. That slaves are good at and we can have her use biotics and she doesn't need to have a weapon for that so we'll strip her and we're gonna give that stuff over to marius probably the dude overall has been pretty reliable it's just that he needs his drugs and i had him go hack that crate while he wasn't in that good of a mood so that's kind of why he had his little freak out there but yeah, I do assure you that Marius has been reliable otherwise. We also have this quest to hunt a duke that is about to expire. And we're actually just going to accept it with... It doesn't really matter who, I think. Because we can't get any silent levels because we're at war with the Empire. I do think it's worth doing this quest though because maybe we could enslave this person. I feel like I've tried to do it before and it hasn't worked. But this dude is a duke and has a bunch of sidecast abilities. We got a lime peel angelfish hunting him. Whoa. Oh, we're getting a raid. Good lord. So we're going to end the episode here, mainly because things are about to get really chaotic. We got a random raid, and then on day 10, we get a challenge from the Wing Dudes, my new fashion that I finally released on the Steam Workshop. I'll be showing off that quest and kind of what that's all about at the start of the next episode. And with that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.